Hi everybody, it's Lolly again. I wanted to do a quick rundown of just some tips and um, troubleshooting with the fuse. The fuse, for those of you who don't know, is this, and it's a, well, a fusing tool. It can melt and fuse together seams in your plastic page protectors, like what you see at the bottom here, these dotted lines. Um, this one is made by We Are Memory Keepers. They are hard to locate right now because there's such a high demand for them. And they're about $30 unless you have some kind of a discount coupon. There's another brand out there, but I forget right now who makes that. And you can also get oh, a soldering tool from Harbor Freight for cheaper. It does take a little practice, but this takes a lot of practice as well. So. One, the first I want to start off with, um, this design that I had shared on a previous video about making these little fused plastic um, banner dangles from paper clips. And there, ha I have experienced this as well, and others are saying that they're having a hard time securing these to the paper clips because they are tearing. So I wanted to give you some advice on that. I'm going to use a really huge paper clip to show you what I'm talking about. So, and I've got glitter everywhere. I'm <laughs> sorry. So on a paper clip, when you have uh, one of these and you're threading it through here uh, and folding it over on the back side and fusing it, I hope this shows up well on camera, what you have is this big air pocket in here. And what I had shown on the video, I did not hold that down well. I just smashed it down hard with the fuse and fused it shut. And so what happens is it's too much pressure and holding the, the uh, fuse tool down too long to get it started and so it is melting this plastic and so what I'm advising is to use some sort of metal you do get this with the, um, with the fuse tool or you can just use an, uh, a ruler get that pin down, sorry, get that pin down right up against the um, paper clip so you're holding it down and then fuse it across there. You're going to have to play with how strong or lightly and how fast you move, how quickly you move your tool. So get it once, move it over just a fraction, do it again and then again. I like to do it three times, not one on top of the other. Okay. So if you're not using the full fuse tool to push that down and fuse it, if something else is holding the plastic together for you, then you can fuse it without melting it. If it is tearing right where the bend in the plastic is and not where you're fusing it, then it's because your page protector is too cheap. <laughs> it can be one of those brittle, crunchy types. I like to get ones that have more of a rubbery feel to them because they seem to work well. But no matter what your page protectors are that you use, keep in mind there are differing weights. Like this one here, I know you can't tell on the camera. This one is thinner than this one. And this one is called Heavy Duty. And it is heavyweight 3.3 mils. I got these from an office supply store years ago. So always when you're fusing, keep in mind the thickness of your page protector. The thinner it is, the more quickly you will have to roll this across to avoid melting holes in your page protector. So get, get used to your brand and your thickness here, and you'll know how much pressure to use. If you don't apply enough, um, if you move too quickly across the page, you're going to find that your seam will come apart. So you'll want to go over it again and make sure you've sealed it well. Uh, another tip is when you hit, this is not hot, so obviously you would never grab them here because they are very hot. When you fuse it, on, on my page, which is, I find about this speed works really well. And um, I let it cool about, I don't know, five seconds before I pick that up and start messing around with it. Otherwise, I can split it before it even has a chance to cool down and seal to itself. Okay. Some other tips that I've learned. I like, you, well, first of all, you need to have a piece of paper between your, um, your self-sealing mat and your work. And I, because if you just do this directly on with just a mat underneath you, you will melt holes in your craft mat. I know because I did it. That was kind of dumb, but I've got little dotted holes, melted holes all over my craft mat. So the paper that I love to use, and I've just discovered this recently, is graph paper. When I'm working on a project, project like these, I made these little, um, I call them like key tags. Um, well, it's a charm, but they remind me of those little key tags that you get from the grocery store for each store that they scan them. Anyway, I wanted to do these and make several all at once, and so I marked on my graph paper where I was going to go, 
and I was able to just fuse down a straight line by following the lines in my graph paper and I could just do this without. It takes so long to use this and when you're working on a small project and you want to hit the area you're aiming for, you really can't tell what, what, your pro what you're working on because it's covering up the project. So I like to be able to use this instead. This has saved me a lot. I can measure out. I can draw lines ahead of time. So I love this. Um, next thing, uh, when you are working, always fuse away from your first seam. So I usually seam my bottom like this. I would seam the bottom and then always work away from the bottom from then on. And the reason is, here's an example. There's my bottom. If I am fusing from the top down, it uh, creates this problem where you end up with this big bunchy wad down at the bottom. You don't want that. You want it to stay nice and flat, so work from the bottom and go up that way. Okay? And also, once you have seamed the first two sides and you want to stuff your item, if you go shoving your fingers down there and trying to poke in your little ephemera and your uh, and your items that you're going to be putting down in there, you could tear the seams again. So I like to use fine tweezers, especially for these little tiny pockets. I will just grab a set of, um, oh yeah, <laughs> sequins. <laughs> grab a set of sequins and put them down that way. For something really tiny that the sequins don't even work, I have used a funnel before. I just put the funnel tip down in there and pour the item in there, and that helps. Okay. The other thing is to remember not to stuff your pockets too thickly. Obviously, sequins is great. Um, glitter is great. This is a just a piece of... Um, here I am. I'm really having a hard time thinking today, girl. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is ribbon. It's, it's flat lace. And then this piece of metal is super thin. But if you want to put buttons in there and wood veneer, they make the pocket thicker. And therefore, it makes it harder to get a good seal because if you really stuff those full, your seams could split again. People have been having that happen. So in that case, if I were you, I would sew my edges instead of just using the fuse on that. Okay? And uh, I think that's all that I was going to share about so tips, and I especially want to make sure you understood how to get these working. I will give you the link to this project in case you haven't seen it, and I will give the link to this video on this project. I hope that helps you and clears up some of the, some of the problems you've been having. Basically, it takes a lot of practice. Do not lose heart. Do not get discouraged. And don't just put it away because you've burned a few projects. We all are going to burn a lot of projects. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday. Bye-bye.